So the quote is, to be honest, I'm a little envious. Here this guy is, taking his aggression out on patio furniture like a champ. He's obviously had a shitty day, as have I, but whereas I keep my aggression pent up until it manifests in the form of passive aggressiveness, this guy actually has an outlet. Oh, I feel so bad for her. Like, the fact that this has to be Ryle, right? I mean, I think so. This just makes me so sad. It's like, physical aggression, no, 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 no. It doesn't matter if it's a patio. Like, the proper outlet would be like sports or something. Just taking a breather. Like, there's ways to do this. Walking it off. If you see someone going aggressively violently, even on patio furniture, that's a red flag. You gotta be concerned. And I know the point is she doesn't know, but like for everyone else, it's like, oh, this is so sad. I, I don't want this, these bad things to happen to her. So Ryle is talking to Lily uh, and he says, what's your name? And the quote is, I feel his voice in my stomach. That's not good. Voices should stop at the ears, but sometimes not very often at all, actually. A voice will penetrate past my ears and reverberate straight down through my body. He has one of those voices, deep, confident, and a little bit like butter. And honestly, like, I would never really describe it this way, but I've definitely felt that. Or like, even if a guy isn't attractive, his voice is very attractive, and he's just like, you know, it's a good feeling. It's a good feeling to like hear a really nice, attractive voice. So I can understand the allure there. And if that's not what the author is going for, then maybe I misinterpreted it. But that's how it felt to me. And like, I could definitely understand that sort of feeling. Uh, it's, it's just, this is going to be an interesting reading experience because it's like, usually, you're kind of hearing a story of people falling in love and it's a happy ending and obviously that's not where this story is going. So I'm a little like, I hope I can just be like, red flag, red flag, red flag, nothing good about him or the good things don't outweigh the bad. I'm not going to see him in any sort of good light. I hope I can feel that way. We're going to have to see. Lily is telling Ryle where she lives, and he's asking her, uh, you know, why she's here, why she's in this building. Your boyfriend live here or something? And she thinks to herself, his comment somehow makes me feel cheap. It was too easy. An amateurish pickup line. From the looks of this guy, I know he has better skills than that. It makes me think he saves the more difficult pickup lines for the women he deems worthy. The fact that, like, she's already seeing some red flags in him or not really, like, she's kind of having certain feelings. Like, she had a certain gut feeling, like, when she felt, like, felt his voice in her instead of just hearing him with the voice. Like, she was a little like, I don't like that, that's not good, whatever. However, she said it, she didn't exactly say it that way. You know, she's, but she's definitely feeling something where it's like, oh, I don't really like that. And that's, you know, that's kind of like your gut telling you, don't do this. Uh, and the fact that, you know, she's kind of feeling like this pickup line for him, you know, it's kind of like, I'm supposed to be impressed by that? No, thank you. So, you know, the fact that I know that they are going to get together and a lot of bad things happen, it's rough because it's like, you know, she's already showing in her head that she's like, mm, I don't know about this guy. So it's like, man, the important thing is, though, that she gets out in the end. She's just explaining why she's there. And the quote is, he regards me with a smile. At least you're economical, he says. That's a good quality to have. At least? I nod, because I am economical. And it is a good quality to have. And like, I think this is one of those things that some of more the feminist types or more 
people that are more like identify the red flags and don't just you know ignore it don't brush it off just because it may be considered small like if it's already bad as something that tiny it's gonna get worse and a bigger bad thing so the fact that you know this isn't you know like this isn't even like 10 pages in or maybe it's like right at 10 pages like she's already seeing multiple things that are a little mm, questionable about this guy and she's kind of like she's kind of seeing that she's kind of like hmm i don't know about this guy but then it's like it could also be a good thing so she's kind of more following the route of what a lot of these people that kind of get stuck in this mess of course no victim blaming here i'm just saying that like that's kind of the trap that a lot of these primarily women are put in where it's like your gut can really tell things and if something bad or questionable is happening you usually can kind of tell or at least have some hesitation but then society kind of conditions us to be like oh that's not a big deal don't worry about it you know you can you know oh if you, if you get if you can't get past this then you're never gonna find someone and it's like what dude so it's you know clearly she's kind of seeing it part of her you know her intuition is definitely there but it's more societal conditioning as kind of having her more like oh i can accept this you know i'm making more of a deal a bigger deal out of it than it needs to be and it's like no this is when you say no and you go and you get out of there but again you know societal social conditioning and everything there's no victim blaming. I'm just making the point that it's like, it's really sad because it's like so many things that she herself is seeing. It's not just we, the audience, see. No, she's seeing it herself. So it's like, man. Riles sharing this story, uh, the whole reason why he wanted her to get off the ledge because someone had fallen and he was a photographer. When my sister told me what happened, the only thing I could think about was whether or not he got the shot. I was hoping his camera didn't fall with him, because that would have been a real waste, you know? To die because of your love of photography, but you didn't even get the final shot that cost you your life. Like, how many mentally stable people, that's like the first thing they think of? No, it's like, oh my gosh, that's awful. And like more of a down the line in hindsight, oh, did they get the shot? You know, like it's definitely not the only thing or the first thing you think of. I'm just gonna like, bruh, he's kind of telling you how woo he is. And uh, continuing the lines, his thought makes me laugh. Although I'm not sure I should have laughed at that. Do you always say what's on your mind? He shrugs, not to most people. I know it's not quite like, you're not like the other girls, but it's very similar because it's kind of like, oh, you're special. Even though we've barely talked, I don't even know you or anything. And he already asked her if she had a boyfriend. It's a little like, mm, I think he's going down that route. And the fact of what kind of story this is. I think that's the right, you know, the intent of that quote. And it's just like, no, do not be flattered by that. 